It's another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily, episode 770, and I'm Dr. Neil, your host of the show. Welcome back to another special Friday edition of Optimal Health Daily, where I answer your questions. On the other days, I read health and fitness blogs to you, kind of like an ongoing audiobook. Now, if you're wondering why bother sending me a question, how do you know whether the advice I'm giving is actually accurate? Well, I do have my Doctor of Public Health degree with an emphasis in chronic disease prevention and nutrition. I also have my Master of Public Health degree with an emphasis in health education and health promotion. I also am a registered dietitian, a certified health education specialist, and a certified exercise physiologist through the American College of Sports Medicine. When I do these Q&As, I try and look at what the data say. I try not to just spend time giving you my opinions on things. Rather, what does the research say? Because that's how we really know what's truly going on and how we can cut through some of these myths out there and get to the real facts. Oh, and when I'm not doing this podcast, I hold three different faculty positions at various institutions. I've been published in over 70 different media outlets. I've hosted presentations at national and international conferences. So the bottom line is I love talking about this stuff. And I wanna make sure that what you're hearing is as often as possible, the truth. So let's hear today's question and start optimizing your life. Hi, Dr. Neil, my name is Mina. I love your show. I came across it a year ago and have not missed one episode since. I've learned so much. My question is about probiotics and non-fat, low-fat, and whole-fat versions of yogurt kefir, and cottage cheese, do their bacterial concentrations, longevity, and potency differ? Another way I might ask is, given the options, what combination, and not just a single selection, would you eat to improve your GI, particularly in anticipation and in the presence of antibiotics? Thank you so much, Dr. Neil. Thank you for listening, and thank you so much for your kind words. Depending on the food source, Yes, the probiotic strains found in that food may differ. As you mentioned, probiotics are often found in dairy products, although other food sources can be sources of probiotics too. Believe it or not, these include fruits, vegetables, and soy. Yogurt and other cultured or fermented dairy products are the most commonly consumed foods containing probiotics. I know I mentioned this on the show before, but just to reset, I wanna refresh our memories and remind ourselves what probiotics actually are. They are live bacteria that support the health of our microbiome. In fact, it's actually believed the term probiotic comes from the combination of two Greek words, which translate to for life. And yes, foods like yogurt, kefir, and yakult contain lots of probiotics. Because probiotics are composed of strains of bacteria, you'll find the names of these strains come from Latin. I will do my best to pronounce some of these strains, so bear with me. The majority of probiotic strains available in the marketplace contain species of lactobacillus and bifidobacterium. And again, these are most often found in dairy products. But which strains are found in what products? And do these strains have different health effects? Those are totally different questions. So I'll begin with the former. Which strains are found in some commonly found products? Let's start with Yakult. Yakult is a dairy-based probiotic drink and it's made of fermented milk, and we're finding contains L. casei Sharota. No, I didn't say my Sharona, it's L. casei Sharota. Now, contrast this with the strains found in Dannon's Activia yogurt, which contains B. animalis DN173010. The Nestle company also has its own probiotic yogurt-like beverage, which also contains B. animalis, but of the lactis subspecies, not the DN173010 species. Greek yogurt and traditional yogurt both contain lactobacillus acidophilus. Cottage cheese contains similar strains, usually both lactobacillus acidophilus and bifidobacterium. When it comes to refrigerated yogurts, the National Yogurt Association, or NYA, yes, it's a real thing, created a seal that can be found on the packaging indicating when a product contains live and active cultures. Food manufacturers earn this seal when they demonstrate that their products contain at least 100 million cultures per gram for their refrigerated products. Frozen yogurts also consist of probiotics, but they have different criteria altogether. For products that don't contain this NYA seal, look for a list of specific live and active probiotic strains on the packaging. Now, here's the issue. We don't really know how helpful these foods are when it comes to actually increasing the number of good bacteria in our guts. 
This is because these foods have to first pass through the stomach before they get to the intestines where they do the majority of the work. The stomach is a pretty harsh environment for most things. So it's possible that many of those good bacteria are destroyed before they get to the intestines where they can thrive. So as always, I have to rely on actual studies to find out whether probiotics are helpful. Luckily, there are plenty of those. So I was talking about how probiotic strains differ between brands, and there are many, many different types of probiotic strains. Based on the data I have seen, there are some probiotics that are showing promise for helping reduce the symptoms of certain conditions. For example, there are some that may help reduce the symptoms of irritable bowel syndrome or IBS, like diarrhea and cramping. Some of these probiotic strains are of the previously mentioned lactobacillus variety. But supplementing with two specific strains of lactobacillus, lactobacillus plantarum and lactobacillus paracasei, seem to be the most helpful. But these specific strains aren't often found in dairy products. Instead, they're found in supplements. So yes, there are many probiotic strains out there and they vary based on the product and type of food consumed. Most probiotics found in dairy products are of the lactobacillus and bifidobacterium varieties. But again, there are subspecies of each of these and that's where we often see differences among dairy products specifically. We must be careful before supplementing with probiotics. So I just mentioned that there are two strains of probiotics that may help with IBS specifically, but they're not often found in fermented dairy products, so they need to be supplemented. But we must be careful before supplementing with probiotics. As I mentioned many times before, the supplement industry is kind of like the Wild West right now. Supplement manufacturers are creating products that aren't being tested by independent third parties. So they're putting fillers in their products and marketing them as supplements. It's very possible that you could go out and purchase what you think is a probiotic supplement, but if we were to actually analyze the product to see what it's truly made of, we might find it contains no good bacteria at all. Or if it does contain good bacteria, there aren't enough of them to make a difference. Most of the studies suggest that getting doses of 1 billion live probiotic cultures may be what's required in order to see any beneficial effects. When it comes to proper storage of these probiotics, we have to be careful. Some require refrigeration, whereas others may be stable at room temperature. It really depends on the brand and the probiotic strains. So it's important to carefully read the packaging to find out how best to store the probiotic supplement. There do seem to be two probiotic supplements that are safe for most people and may be helpful. The first would be VSL3 and the other BioK+. But as I always say, If you choose to begin supplementing, if you think you want to start taking VSL3 or BioK+, please speak to your primary healthcare provider first. A couple of weeks ago, a caller asked me whether it's safe for everyone to take probiotics, and my answer right away was no, so it's always best to check with your healthcare provider. Thank you again for the question. You'll be entered into a very small raffle every month to win a book on the first of the month, which is this Monday. So if you want to submit a question and have a chance to win books, it's really easy. You can call in. The number is 61 I love ohd Or you can submit your audio question at oldpodcast.com slash ask. Do it before Monday to be in the next raffle. All right, that's another week of Optimal Health Daily. Thank you for listening every day. Thank you for listening all the way through. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you back here on Monday and in July where your optimal life awaits.